Copenhagen has recently been ranked the world's most climate resilient city. Copenhagen is threatened by higher sea levels, 30 to 40 percent more intense rainfall with longer periods of drought in between, storm surges, a 2 to 3 degrees Celsius increase in temperatures, the heat island effect, and heat waves. In order for Copenhagen to become adaptive to future climatic changes, it is dealing with the concrete challenges which the climate will bring, while simultaneously contributing to the creation of more recreational opportunities in the city, new jobs, and a greener capital. In other words, a green growth strategy. The Copenhagen Climate Change Adaptation Plan includes the building of dikes, building higher above sea level, expanding the sewers capacity, local management of rainwater, early warning systems, establishing waterproof cellars, adapting areas where rainwater can be stored, more efficient urban transportation and energy, green roofs and facades, harbour swimming pools that accommodate increased runoff but that do not contaminate the water, more green spaces, and so on. Initiatives will start with protecting public buildings and land such as kindergartens, schools, homes for the elderly, community centers, and parks. The growth of the city has taken place over a long period of time. Approximately 1% of buildings are replaced each year. When this is done, old buildings are replaced with buildings that are adapted to new climate conditions. This may include the securing of their foundations and basements against rising groundwater levels, as well as protecting underground infrastructure. Storm surges may result in temporary high tides in parts of Copenhagen. This could cause flooding in those areas. It has been proposed to build a dike at North Harbour, Nordhafen and Kalvebudern, while the rest of the coastline out towards the Sound, Oresund, is raised. Dikes and a higher wall along the inner parts of Copenhagen Harbour and coastal regions would protect the city from storm surges. Measures are being put in place to reduce the runoff from rain into sewers and to rather manage water runoff locally with the help of green, low-technology urban drainage systems that can absorb the rainwater and enhance the green cityscape. Permeable paved surfaces are created through which the runoff can be absorbed. Furthermore, runoff from big public spaces such as streets and squares will be redirected to areas that have been identified where it will cause less harm such as open green spaces, car parks and playing fields. Where this is not possible, the capacity of sewage pipes and pumping stations are being increased. Many buildings in Copenhagen have underground basements and cellars. People store many of their belongings here, and often all the main technical connections such as electricity and internet are located in the basement. In the case of these flooding, people incur huge losses and are without electricity and telephone or internet connection for days. To counter the heat island effect as well as air and noise pollution in the future, the existing green areas will be preserved with care and more trees and green surfaces, the green, and water, the blue, will be incorporated into the urban fabric to provide more shade, cooling and air circulation. In terms of moving people within the city, Copenhagen has made cycling safe and convenient with nearly 40% of residents commuting to school or work by bicycle. Efficient and affordable alternatives to private transport is available through the integrated city metro, bus and train services. Copenhagen have also taken a serious and progressive approach in achieving a low carbon future. With aims to reduce carbon dioxide emissions by 20% in the next four years, Copenhagen's vision for a sustainable future relies on ambitious goals and proactive thinking. In this way, it's no surprise that Copenhagen is striving to become the world's first carbon neutral capital by 2025, primarily through investments in renewable energy. In fact, wind energy already produces 22% of Denmark's total electrical consumption. So, what can African cities learn from two Scandinavian cities? Local governments are the closest to where the consequences of disasters and climate change pan out, and thus best positioned to build resilient cities. As with Malmo and Copenhagen, disaster risk reduction measures should be embedded in sustainable development planning policies and strategies. 
well-run cities such as Malmo and Copenhagen can be among the safest places in the world from the impact of natural disasters. African cities can learn from the political will it has taken to implement sustainable and resilient urban management strategies. A drastic shift from a business-as-usual approach is required. Successful strategies build resilient communities, whilst ensuring vulnerabilities are not increased through development efforts.